Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So let's take a look at my biological age, 73 months into my longevity experiment using the blood test results that I had taken in March of 2025. Enough waffling off me. Let's get into it. So let's take a look at the supplements that I was taking when I had this blood test done and the one compound at the end that I've added that I think is key to my drop in biological age. First of all, we've got nicotinamide mononucleotide, NMN, 1.5 grams per day. Trimethylglycine, again, 1.5 grams per day. Transresveratrol, one gram a day, mixed into my full fat yogurt. And that's on a Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And that, I take that on the days that I don't do weight training at the gym. Then we've got metformin, 1,000 milligrams a day. That's two 500 milligrams slow release tablets. And I take those just before I eat. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units per day, 10,000 on a Monday and a Wednesday. Then we've got vitamin K2, 120 micrograms of the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams of the L3 and 8 version. Then we've got high molecular weight, hyaluronic acid, 400 milligrams of that. Then we've got fisetin. Here we've got 2.4 grams per day on the first, second and third of each month. Cursetin, again, 2.4 grams a day on the first, second, and third of each month. And if you want to know why I use this periodic dosing protocol and not a daily dose, there's a link in the description below to my periodic dosing video. Then we've got baby aspirin, 81 milligrams a day. Cert 6 activator, then we've got 800 milligrams a day. DIM, 600 milligrams a day. Now I've got a new kind of brand. That's two 300 milligram doses, one between 6 and 6.30 in the morning and the other one at 8 p.m. Um, before I go to bed between 9 and 9.30. Then we've got glyna, glycine and NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Here we've got 800 milligrams a day. Creatine, five grams a day. I now do three months on and one month off. And that one month off is the month before I get my blood test. Um, if you watch the video before, you'll know that if you watch these videos before, you'll know that my creatinine levels were extremely high, which affected my biological age. That's because I was taking 10 milligrams, uh, sorry, 10 grams of creatine a day and eating a lot of red meat. Uh, then we've got omega-3, 800 milligrams of EPA and 600 milligrams of DHA. And now we've got one gram of berberine as well. Well, that's it for my supplement stack. So the first website I use to check my biological age is this one, longevityadvantage.com. There's a link in the description below to this website. Uh, once you get there to the biological age calculator, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see there that it's got what the input levels that you require. So we've got albumin and then we've got creatine glucose, C-reactive protein, lymphocyte, mean cell volume, that's your blood, red cell distribution width, that's also blood, alkaline phosphate, white blood cells, and then also your age. Once you've dialed those in, you click next step. Um, you then add your name and your email address. And within about a minute or two, they will then forward you all of your results. Now you can see here the last time I used it, October 2024, it returned these results. My chronological age was 60. My phenotypic age was 53.38. So phenotypic versus chronological minus 6.62. So that's six years and seven months younger. My DNA methylation age back then came back at 52.59. So that DNA methylation age versus my chronological or my birth age is minus 7.41. That's a reduction of seven years and five months. That was back in October last year. So I, I entered my latest blood test results into this particular website. This time, my chronological age when I took the test was 60 years and 11 months. That's nearly 61. My phenotypic age came back as 47.59. So my phenotypic age versus my chronological age is minus 12.41. So that's 12 years and five months younger. My DNA methylation age came back as 47.01. So my DNA methylation age versus my chronological age is now minus 12.99. So that's a reduction in years of 12 years and 11 months. So just shy of 13 years younger. So I have had some comments on previous videos asking me what is phenotypic age. I used to shoot up or just post up a definition of phenotypic age on the video. 
Some people found that definition a little bit baffling. So what is phenotypic age? It's a biological aging measure that estimates how old a person appears to be biologically based only on their clinical biomarkers and not just their chronological or their birth age. It was developed by Dr. Morgan Levine and her team in 2018 as part of a broader effort to better quantify biological aging and predict disease risk, mortality, and our functional decline. But why does this type of age, phenotypic age, why does it actually matter? First, it's a mortality predictor. It's highly predictive of all-cause mortality, outperforming, obviously, chronological age. It also gives insights into how healthy or unhealthy our aging process is, and it is responsive to intervention. So it can change with lifestyle improvements that you uh, perform things such as diet, exercise, and supplementation, which seems to be the case for me at present, making it useful to track your longevity interventions over longer periods of time. So let's move on to the second website that I use. This is biologicalage.com. And again, there's a link in the description below to this website. Now I'll show you this one because you can get an accurate or fairly accurate idea of what your epigenetic age is without having to do a blood test. It just asks you a series of questions. Uh, and since I've started using this site, it has updated quite a lot, far more questions now on a broader range of lifestyle factors. It's easy to get going. Um, you click on let's get started. You add your birth age. For me, it's 1964. Then the region you live in. So I'm down here now in the Philippines. Then your education. Then your body type. Then sleep. And if you follow the channel, you know that I post my sleep scores quite regularly in the community tab. And I'm normally getting between seven and nine hours per night. The next one then is the one that's slightly confusing or could throw you off. This says how many units of alcohol do you consume per day? It's none or the other option is one. Uh, obviously, there's more per day if you have a problem with drinking. Um, I used to drink. I don't anymore. Two or three drinks per week. Um, now, if I was to click on one, that would mean the equivalent of seven per week, but I only drink two or three, so that would be inaccurate. But if I clicked on none, then that would also be accurate because I do drink um, three drinks per week. So what I tend to do, or what I always do, is click on one, which means my biological age will go higher in the final result, um, which hopefully would then spur you on, if that was the same, to making larger lifestyle interventions to bring your biological age down. Now, back in October of 2024, when I was 60, and six months old. It said, you can see here, I was 49. So 11 years younger, that's nice. Good if you haven't got blood test results, but blood tests, I think, are going to give you a more accurate reflection of your epigenetic age. This time I took the test on the 10th of March, 2025, when I was 60 and 11 months. It reads 51 years of age, so around nine years younger. Again, great, but not really that accurate. So I'm five months older than the first time I took the questionnaire and my biological age has increased by two years. This is obviously not as accurate as the algorithm uh, that uses your blood markers to estimate your age. You can also see here some very generic statements. Um, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Now, I do agree with this, but my breakfast is usually about one or two in the afternoon because I'm now, oh man, one meal a day. Um, I think what they're talking about is breakfast is the most important meal of the day, which is a marketing gimmick by cereal companies. And they want you to eat sugar laden breakfast snacks as opposed to wholesome food. Eating at least five servings of fruit and vegetables every day is important. I think that myth has been busted now, um, although there's no reason you can't eat vegetables because they are a good source of the right type of carbohydrate. Eating refinely and deep fat foods is a sometimes treat and should only be eaten occasionally. I think you can deep fry, you can deep fry your food as long as it's deep fried in tallow or maybe olive oil that isn't burning. Um, ultra processed, high refined foods, yes, eat those as little as possible. And it says do push ups every day. And again, this isn't bad advice, but then don't just stick at push ups. You can do any body weight exercise. You can do air squats, um, sit ups, etc. So that's it for my biological age using biologicalage.com. So let's do a quick summary of what we've just covered. So at the time of this particular test, my chronological age, my birthdays, was 60 years 
and 11 months. Longevity advantage had my DNA methylation age or my biological age as 47 0.01. That's 12 years and 11 months, so fairly close to 13 years younger than I actually am. The less accurate biologicalage.com had me at 51, which is nine years younger. Now, I think we can all agree that the scientific DNA methylation test, like the Horvath clock or one that uses blood markers, is far more accurate than just answering questions. However, try to avoid companies like epiage.com who test against less than 20 markers. I look for companies that test against hundreds of thousands of markers for a more accurate and a more cost-effective option of working out your biological age. Let's take a look at my overall progress. You can see here on the graph, the blue line, that represents my birthdays, my chronological age. That will always creep up from left to right as the years roll on. It will go up another notch the next time I do this test because I'm 60, uh, 60 now, I'm 61 in about four or five days. The red line shows my biological age uh, and you can see that goes up and down depending on the lifestyle interventions that I have introduced. You can see here, this is the pattern I'm looking for where my chronological age is here, my biological age is a lot lower and this is the lowest it's ever been. My chronological age is 60, my biological age there you can see is 47.01. This is the pattern you're looking for. Uh, I've done this fictitious graph. This is what you're not looking for. And if you've got this, then you've got some issues and you've got some changes to make. You can see here the chronological age started for this individual at 56 and they are now 61. Biological age was good because when they started, that person's age was 40. But unfortunately, their biological age has overtaken their chronological age and they're now 75. That's not the pattern that you're looking for. Um, this is the pattern you're looking for. Now, if you do want to test your biological age using a more accurate DNA methylation age test of the big three, Pro Health Longevity, Do Not Age and Renew by Science, both Pro Health Longevity and Do Not Age carry them. And if you do choose to buy from one of these, please feel free to use my code, MYNMN at checkout. They get between 10 and 15% off. And there are links in the description below to these particular biological age tests. But more importantly, how do you think I've managed to achieve this? Well, it hasn't been just one thing. You can see here on my bio age graph that's plotted my biological age from January of 2021 to the present hasn't been achieved quickly or in one simple step. The only thing that was easy to explain and then adjust was a definite increase in my biological age in May of 2023. You can see here the red line very close to the blue. Here I went from a biological age of 49.70 in December to a biological age of 58.20. That's a drop in age of 8.5 years. That was when my chronological age was only 59. So pretty much the same. This is obviously not what I'm trying to achieve in this experiment. Now, if you did watch that particular video, you'd know that looking at my blood test results, it was because my creatinine levels were extremely high. That's because I was in the Middle East. I was eating steak three or four times a week, as well as making my own homemade beef burgers. And I was close to taking around 10 grams of creatine a day um, for muscle building, etc. That was a mistake by me because I was using the wrong size scoop. I should have been taking five grams but I was overdosing in creatine as well. So I stopped or reduced my red meat intake and I stopped creatine supplementation. And at the next test, which is in September of 2023, you can see my biological age dropped then down to 58.20. Uh, sorry, from 58.20 down to 52.04. That's a drop in biological age of 6.16 years. So we're saying I've I'd decreased in age then by around six years. Now, this latest drop, I think, was down to my blood glucose levels. I was taking one gram of metformin prior to this, but at the time of taking this test, I was also taking one gram of berberine. My blood glucose levels were actually outside of the reference range in that they'd actually dropped down to too low. Now I'm taking one gram of metformin as before, two 500 milligram slow release capsules. I'm now reduced as well my berberine intake to 500 milligrams a day and we'll see how effect, how that affects my blood glucose levels at the next blood test and if that does in fact also adjust my biological age too. Now if you're trying to control your blood sugar also and you're looking for a reputable supplier to buy your berberine from, check out the big three. Renew by Science 
don't age and pro health longevity. And if you do buy from one of these, please feel free to use the code my NMN at checkout. They get between 10 and 15% off. And I put links in the description below to these companies, Berberine products. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, I found it particularly good. Uh, I like that my biological age is now more or less 13 years younger. I will continue to make interventions as my experiment continues to try and bring that uh, biological age even further down. So if you've had a blood test done and you can cover the markers that are needed, why not try longevityadvantage.com to see what your biological age actually is. If you had a blood test, then why not give it a go? You've really got nothing to lose. If you haven't had a blood test and you don't want to have a blood test, then always look at biologicalage.com, the questionnaire. Um, always err on the side of being a bad person when it comes to longevity, when you answer the questions, like the example of the alcohol uh, as I went through the test, so that your biological age ends up going higher, which would hopefully mean that you'd make more drastic uh, interventions to try and bring your biological age down. Um, I'd be interested to see if anyone who's watching the video has actually taken one of these tests or a different one. And if you're taking a different one, please leave a link so I can check it out also. If you have taken a test and you know your biological age, please let us know in the comment section below what your chronological age is, but also more importantly, how much younger you really are.